in 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 your side um attitude work rate all them things were missing uh yesterday and it was just disappointing like right from the very first few minutes Mayo just seemed to be well up for it they were running off the shoulder and maybe they have a bit more work done um than Galway have but it was really disappointing like the Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. Now you're welcome along to the latest episode of the Maroon and White Pod. I'm delighted to be joined by two former, fo- former Galway footballers in Sean Oak de Pair and Mike Merton to look back on Galway's defeat yesterday to Mayo on a final scoreline of 2-12 to 10 points. Disappointment and a lot of negativity around Galway football in the last 24 hours with the result yesterday, but obviously some key men missing, which I suppose Pork and the management team are going to hope to get back soon. But my coming to you first, it, it still is disappointing no matter the way you look at it, down players, you're, you're still looking for a performance against your neighbours. Yeah, exactly, uh, Paul. I just think it was just... There was just the the key, the few key things you want in 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 your side, um, attitude, work rate, all them things were missing uh, yesterday, and it was just disappointing. Like right from the very first few minutes, Mayo just seemed to be well up for it. They were running off the shoulder, and maybe they have a bit more work done um, than Galway have, but it was really disappointing. Like it's still only the first game; it's still only early, and they have seven more games. Uh, the rest of the league so hopefully next weekend can be a bit better Why do you think some of them key ingredients were missing yesterday Mike? I don't know maybe they were lacking leadership I think that's a a big thing I think one thing we learned from yesterday is that we're very reliant on a core group of maybe six or seven players like we're missing Sean Kelly Liam Silk Paul Conroy didn't start Damien Comer, and if you put maybe Shane Welsh and John Daly on top of them, they're they're what I would call Galway's main main players. And if you go in without them, without two or three of them, we've seen the effects it can have uh, yesterday. But um, it's just probably Porrick is trying to build a, a panel of players maybe for later on in the summer where he could have three or four players to come on with ten minutes to go in a in a big game and. I suppose now is the time you're going to find out whether has he got them. And on the basis of yesterday, he he's still reliant on, on, on them players and probably maybe 17, 18 players. That's what he's relying on now. But the other side, it's hard to build a squad too. Like, you know, and Mayo probably just are that further further on than and Galway maybe fitness-wise and condition-wise. So, you know. Do you agree with all that, John Oak? Um, I, I, you know, I, I suppose all Galway football supporters have been, um, I suppose, discussing yesterday's match today, you know, in workplaces and, um, you know, that type of thing. And there's a lot of, um, well, maybe doom and gloom is too too strong a phrase to use about. We'll say the first game of the league. Yes, it was a, it was at home, and we've only three home games this year, so one down, and we haven't won it. And yes, it was against our um, our, our dear neighbours Mayo. And I suppose, you know, I would agree with Mike in that. I suppose the the performance wasn't. Uh, I don't think what uh, Porrick and his management team would have expected. But that said, you know, I, I'd prefer to see the glass half full all the time. I think, you know, if you were to look at the big picture, last year, Dublin were in Division 2. Um, the only, as far as I could see, good performance that they gave in Division 2 was in the first half of the final against Derry. And they won that. Uh, they kind of sleepwalked their way through Leinster. and. The, the, the only time, well, not the only time, but the time when they decided to wake up was the second half against Mayo and Croke Park. So that was Dublin, right? So then you had Kerry, just about survived in Division 1. Um, 
They were beaten at home by Mayo. So, you know, I think, you know, looking at the big picture, assuming that all the things that you need to work on after yesterday, assuming that, you know, all the players on the panel take out the the mirror and look at themselves and say, right, uh, where did I or where do I have to improve on on yesterday? You know, and it, for certain players, it's fitness. For others, it's touch, that kind of thing. But I wouldn't, like, uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't be all doom and gloom over yesterday. Like, they're they're not going to be feeling too, you know, too good about themselves this morning. But again, it's only the first uh, match in the league, and the beauty is that you know they have a game now next Sunday against Roscommon to try and improve on all the things that they didn't do so particularly well yesterday. Um, you know, so um, roll on next Sunday. I think it's good, Sean, to put that into perspective because obviously. We're down a lot of key players yesterday, um, as it's been regarded. But just a point that Mike made there at the start, there still is this sense, and I agree with him, I think he's spot on, that we're still there reliant on these four or five key players, as he outlined at the start of the podcast. Yeah, no, that's true. I agree. And, you know, the the, the word on the street, if you like, regarding uh, some of the injuries that, some of the lads that weren't playing yesterday, Damien Comer, Liam Silk, Sean Kelly, um, is that, you know, they are, you won't be seeing them uh, next next Sunday anyways. Um, so, you know, that's a bit concerning uh, because you look at any team that has challenged for All-Ireland finals over the last, whatever, you go back 20 years, you go back whatever you want. You're, you you need to have as much as possible an injury free squad, and right now, like oh, we're in a bad place in terms of that. Uh, and then you know when you rip the heart out of your team, obviously then, you know you're looking for leadership of 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 fellows who may you know it mightn't come as naturally to them, but you know I suppose to kind of to, to slightly go off on a tangent, you know there were silver linings to yesterday as well. So, for example, um, Liam O'Connell at corner forward. I mean, mm-hmm. he 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 scored two points, um, and he you know he's not afraid to take on, uh, you know, a scoring opportunity. I think he had five shots at goal, and he got two. Like I said, you'd kill Ian O'Curry. He only got you know a ten minute cameo at the end. He scored a nice point as well. So you know. Th- Imagine what these guys, you know, they came into a team yesterday that, you know, maybe was lacking a bit of leadership. But imagine what those guys could, you know, you know how they could flourish if if you had the full deck of cards uh, to play with. Um, you know, but yes, we, you know, we have to get our 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 injured players back on the pitch. Mike, from a forward's perspective, Sean Oak touched there on Liam O'Connell's performance and it's one to highlight because we, pro- we probably are trying at the minute to find these scoring forwards because in the last year or two outside of Damien Comer and Shane Walsh, we've, we've struggled for scores up top. But wasn't it great just to see Liam O'Connell, particularly a player at inter-county level, comes on the stage two out of five um, he did have three wides, but wasn't it great just to see him take on these opportunities, not be afraid, and and just throw off the shackles? Yeah, I was delighted. If you were, if you want to get a few positives from yesterday, he definitely was one of them. And I think Sean Ogus is so right in what he said. You put him in with maybe a Damien Comer inside in the full forward line, like he could feed off, uh, feed off, feed off Damien, and he could in, he could get five or six, he could get a goal in games. And it's like Anton, you, you'll always play better with better players around you. Like you, you think about him yesterday. Like he was inside with with Niall Daly. Like Niall Daly's not a full forward for Galway, and he, I don't know where that came out of. To be honest, yeah, Damien got injured during the week. He couldn't start. Was was it just a, a rush of blood to the head from Porrick and the management to throw him in, or what? Like you think, you know, Paul Conroy or or, or Robert Finnerty were were a way better option to to play inside with Liam Cornelia, but um. But definitely, he he was really one of the standout players from yesterday, and I think it was great to see Kieran Malloy back as well after a long injury as well. But I think the biggest thing I worry about yesterday is our midfield. Like I thought we got overran in midfield, and 
are we going to go back now again to, to Paul Conroy again next Sunday to, to and Paul like he's turning 35 in a few months time like is he going to be heading our midfield going into championship with Killy McDade injured it's, it's a big ass like so um, that's one if you want to put a negative on it I, I'd be worried about the midfield for the next coming the next few weeks but in saying that all all we need is six points to, to stay in Division 1 and you'd be hoping for a huge reaction next Sunday against Roscommon and I know Shane might have picked up a bit of an injury but you'd be always expecting you could go down and get two points in, in, in High Park and then you're left with maybe getting four points out of your last five games Like so it's it's doable and as I was saying there early on today the top four teams uh, that finished the league last year like they didn't end up in the semi-finals like so that's another side of it too. Maybe poor thinking down the road, uh, championship, get everyone right, you know. But I'd worry about Sean Kelly as well, to be honest, you lads, because he's injured pretty much from their mag game last year and he hasn't featured. He played again again Mayo the following week. He did a bit of a spell out in uh, America and that'd be my biggest worry because I remember seeing it back in 2010, Michael Meehan was in there and he got a bad injury in April or you know and it kind of he, he didn't play a lot after that like so maybe they're hiding something from him like that's nearly he'd be running seven eight months since he he got that injury so that'd be a big worry for me going, going forward as well Sean Kelly's injury a point my touch is on there Sean it was really I suppose the common team of yesterday we were over ran at midfield we were over ran from the Mayo half back line of Paddy Dirk and Omar Glocklin Sam Canlan driving forward, that's probably the biggest takeaway and I suppose the worry you'd have around that area just with God being overran in that sector. Yeah, yeah. like I was uh, I was doing the co-commentary yesterday with TG Carr and like I had a fairly good bird's eye view of of the action on the on the field and you know that was one thing that really uh, stood out for me is that Mayo's pace all over the pitch um, as you said, especially in the middle, in the middle third, you had you had Paddy Durkin zipping up and down. You had Owen McLaughlin the far side he scored a nice goal. You then had Sam Callanan. You know, any time Shane Welsh, you know, tried to make a burst, Sam Callanan was on his shoulder uh, grappling with him. And then you had the young lad there midfield, Bob Tuhi, um, you know, he he got around the place as well, and uh, um. You know they were, they were, uh, they did look conditioned. They did look, um, you know, fairly fast. Well, you know, there's rumours going around that Galway trained on Saturday and they looked a bit leggy. But I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe that at all. Uh, they probably met up, but it was more just for a meeting, that type of thing. But, um, like I think, I think yesterday as well, if if you were to ask, uh a few of the Galway players as to, you know, their positioning on the field. So let's look at, for example, Sean O'Meal Kieran. You know, his first game for the guts of uh, two years after a bad injury. And we say Sean would be a lot more comfortable, I would think, if you asked him maybe somewhere in the full back line, but yet he was asked to play um, as a number five. So, you know, did that really suit him? Did that suit his game? Um, you know, Dylan McHugh then, who's say, always natural number five, he was asked to play in midfield. But sometimes, you know, like, you know, we've all these visions of, of Dylan as a wing back and he bombing forward. So yesterday when he was playing midfield, he probably didn't get, you know, he didn't do that as much. You know, when you play in a different position, sometimes it's harder to read the the, the game, if you like. So, you know, looking ahead to next Sunday, and I just use those two players as an example. Um, you know, could we play players in positions that are probably, um, you know, more suited to their game? Now, look, I'm I'm no expert, but, and I'm sure there's a reason as to why, um, you know, players were played in certain positions. But, um, you know, it's just something to maybe think about. And I get it. You know, I suppose that, you know Mayo did look. Um, bit zippier, but it's you know sometimes 
when a team is winning and is in a winning position, you know, they, 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 they have more energy than the team that's chasing the game. So, and, you know, so some of that is, 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 is if you like, in the head, as far as mm. I'm concerned. But, but that said, um, you know, pace is, you know, if you were to have one thing as an intercounty footballer, you know, if you were, if you were to ask whoever you believe in God or whatever, for one sort of, um, uh, sort of thing to give you, as you know, that would be the thing, pace. Like, and you know, Mayo did look a bit uh, paceier than uh, Galway yesterday. But again, I wouldn't be hugely concerned about things like that. Um, you know, Galway have, you know, they have S and C experts, and you know, the, the you know they go by numbers and stuff like that. So I like. I, I I wouldn't be, I wouldn't look too deeply into that, even though to the, you know, to the people like ourselves, the untrained eyes, if you like, uh, that were that was looking at the game yesterday, it did look as if Mayo were were a bit um, kind of zippier around the place. I to- I totally agree with you, Sean. All but like, as regards the strength and condition, like. In my time, uh, I think that's the biggest thing. Mayo had well over, uh, well on us. Like they were just far more mm. strength and conditioning. But I definitely think the last four or five years, Galway have got up to their level and even even uh, passed them out in, in that regard. But I just think yesterday it, it all came down to, to to attitude and and the, this you know you know yourself playing a pair of stadium a dirty wet day. You just do the simple things right, and you bring intensity, you bring work rate. You, you you try and uh, give I suppose the right do the do the simple things right, and and I don't think Galway that that's what was lacking yesterday, and I think that's exactly what Paul Joyce is going to be hammering home this week, uh, uh tra- tra- at the training ground. To, you can do all the tactics you want, and you can do positions, and you can say you you position here, you position there, and do all these certain pl- plays and all that. But if you don't match that with work rate. And honesty, and 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 putting your head where where you wouldn't put your 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 foot, you like you're not going to you're not going to you you'll take um you'll take a good attitude player that'll give you absolutely everything by before a man that'll just maybe he might turn it on one day he might the next day you don't know what you're going to get any day you go out from him like you know so if ever they want right. uh, if they ever want that the next day it's 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 next Sunday they want to bring it. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'd agree with you, but you know the 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 thing about yesterday is, I don't think. Well, I'm pretty certain every single Galway player yesterday isn't happy today. So there's a lot of uh, soul searching going on today, and you know the the reason the reason they're on a Galway panel, and the reason the majority of them played in an All-Ireland final two years ago is, you know, because they are top, top class players. So, you know, you'd expect a response. Um, you know, f- whatever reason they were, if you like, flat-footed yesterday, who knows? But, um, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd still be, I'd still be optimistic. Mike, if you're a senior player in that setup. Do you have a conversation with some of the players now going back into training and just, I suppose, outline that that wasn't good enough? Yeah. All I know is the two years I was there, we used to always have a, <laughs> there used to be an emergency meeting halfway through the league that we we had to win a league game. Or, so um, I just think, geez, there'll be a lot of lads going in with their heads down tomorrow night at training. None of them, so they won't, they, won't be, they won't be too much talked at the meeting. None of them, you know, so uh, I just think they they know themselves. They know themselves that it wasn't good enough, and it's hard to believe you you lose by two points to Mayo in a, in a real local derby game. But like you can you can blame the players all you want, but like Pork's the manager. Like so the book has stopped with the the manager at the end of the day, and he's to take responsibility of that group of players. He put them out there. Regardless of the injuries, if we want to go down through the injuries and say we have seven or eight injuries and they're all above the stand, we'll call out the physio and 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 bring her out and see what, what what's going on, like or what, 
what's the story? Are they doing something wrong in SNC? Are they doing some too much out in the training pitch? What's their training load like? Like so, maybe that's that, that's something like with all these injuries. But I just get back. The players will know themselves it wasn't good enough, and uh, they're going to have to knuckle down. I, I wouldn't say they'll do a lot. You're not going to do a lot in in seven days. But I just get back to to the attitude. It has to be way different. Like even just. The first five or ten minutes, you knew it. I don't watch on all things. You knew after the first ten or fifteen minutes, you knew you knew Mayo were up for it and Gaul were lackluster and they were kind of they were just going through the the paces. It was it was like a friendly, it was like a challenge game, Bun Pier Stadium, but there was a crowd at the at the game yesterday. I felt or not. Definitely did feel like that uh, at certain stages. I suppose, <laughs> like reflecting on it all, Sean Oak for Galway supporters, I think the biggest annoyance and hindrance with supporters from the weekend is the Goa Mayo records dished out since Porto has been manager Goa bet Mayo once in eight meetings uh, that includes a draw as well across league and championship and if if you look at that that doesn't indicate that the rivalry has been that strong in the last few years when you look at the number of victories Mayo have had Yeah I suppose look at there's there's nobody, you know, in 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 Galway that loves beating Mayo as much as Porrick. So, I, you know, and I'm sure he he put that across to them, um, you know, coming up to the game to the game yesterday. But yeah, look at we've we've all been in in this position before where you come off a, 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 a off a result that. You know that you're not particularly happy with, especially you know against against your neighbours. So you know you have to dust yourself down, uh, go into training. You know the wh- you know whoever the leaders are in the group, and you know these guys, some of them are injured, but you know it's a case of kind of I don't know talking it through and all that, and 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 just you know getting back up on the horse. We'd say for next Sunday, um, you know it's it's funny. I don't know the the. I read some statistic there. Yes, in the last nine games or something, we've only beaten them once. But then in the previous uh, five or six matches, we had, we'll say, the Indian sign over Mayo. So sometimes, you know, you get these kind of, um, you know, if you like, trends uh, in results between, um, you know, different different counties. But, you know, I, su- look at, I suppose it's the fact that it's Mayo as well. Uh, you know, I mean, they have they have the bragging rights at the moment. Um, but you know, how do you approach this week? I agree with Mike. You're not gonna you're not gonna train very hard. Uh, it's it's a case of just you know resetting the mind and that, and just getting ready for for we'd say a tough challenge next Sunday against Roscommon. But um, uh, you know, it's. It's a collective. It's not. It's not. It's not just Porrick Joyce. It's. It's. It's everybody. Um. So everybody. If if everybody, you know, I know it's a cliche, but if everybody puts their shoulders to the wheel and gives that extra four or five percent, well, then the collective then is is you know the effect of that is is huge. You know, everybody is a cog in the in the in the chain. So everybody has a role to play. So um, you know that that's that'd be my attitude going in. Um. And I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't throw all, what does it say, all, all the toys out uh, of the pram at all. It was a difficult situation as well for Port Joyce after the interview after the interview between the press, Mike. He's asked, is Peter Cook involved? And I think everyone in Goa knew the last few weeks that Peter wasn't going to be com- uh, involved. But then when it's confirmed, along with James McLaughlin and Keane Hernan, but particularly Cook, like he's probably the best player in the club championship this year, it's... It's such a hammer blow to get. Ah, uh, yeah, but like people gotta realise too, like there's other stuff going on in the life where God with football, like and people have lives to be living and Sean Old was the first person to tell you the, the commitment that's involved and even back in his time, like, can you imagine what it's like now, like and Sean Old was talking about there they met up on the on the Saturday for a few hours, which which I think they did. I heard that too, like like you're talking, they probably train Tuesday, Friday, Saturday morning, match yesterday. The lads are probably doing a bit on their own. Like the commitment, the dedication that's involved in intercounty football now is colossal. Like, and you know, only one person wins, the, only one team wins the All Ireland at the end of the year, and 
like the, the the time you're investing all this time for i suppose the the hope and the the, the dream i suppose of winning an all ireland or maybe the dream is just to win a kind of title for certain lads i don't know but the ultimate is to to win an all ireland like and it just people aren't committing i suppose Peter Cook probably has all the things going on in his life. He he likes to do a bit of travelling. He's been back and forth to New York the last few years. He he has his county medal now, I think, and he won it one last year. And like I suppose it's, it's maybe it's not as attractive as it once was back in back in Sean Oak's time or something for certain players. Other players it's 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 like it's God like it's 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 heaven like play to represent your county like but for others it mightn't be as appealing like you know were you surprised to hear that news Sean that I suppose it it's unconfirmed yet whether McLaughlin or Hernan um, will play a part when they do come back from the Erasmus but when they're back from the Erasmus it's going to be mid-May go or you're going to be in the heat of the championship so it's probably unlikely that they're going to be involved but the Cook news were you surprised to hear that then no I, I, I well I, I can't I know I, I I wouldn't say I'd know him very well, but I I you know I've met Peter Cook a few times. Lovely fella, super footballer, um, you know. But I think it was common knowledge that uh, he wasn't going to be uh, involved this year with Galway, and you know, obviously a loss. Um, you know, he, he's a he's a kind of a big rangy player, able to score. Um, you know, just a very very effective player. Now we'd say the the other two lads, Keen Hernan, you know, very promising um introduction to the Galway team last year. You know, a real modern player, um, you know, is pacey and he's 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 tall as well and is comfortable on the ball. And look at, I mean, you know, he may come back from. Uh, I mean, what is Erasmus? Anyways, is that kind of where you go abroad as a student? So you know, yeah, he's the I only mean, problem it, with Keen Hernan is he's in Erasmus in Los Angeles. So um, he won't be. Well, uh, isn't isn't Los Angeles a wonderful place to train, uh, uh, Paul? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, you know, th- he he actually that might actually do. You know, I know the the, the championship starts a lot earlier now, but um, you know, it's not impossible to think that he might come back in 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 you know in decent nick um you know as regards james mclaughlin i mean t- t- to be you know i think we're talking more about potential there uh he hasn't played a lot uh for galway at senior level anyway so um but certainly we'd say the other two you know would be um you know would be would be people that Porrick would be looking uh, to use, but you know that's that's part of the uh, as as Mike has said, part of the modern day intercounty, uh, you know, scene. If you like, I mean, you 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 have to live the lifestyle nowadays, twenty four seven. I would say, you know, forty eight weeks of the year, that type of thing, and you just have to buy into it, and that's it. You, there's no shortcuts. I mean, if you go back to my day. You know, you 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 could. I'm not saying you could take shortcuts, but you know there were certain times where you could switch off, whereas now you can't really. Mm. And that's why I would be, you know, if you ever hear me criticize any, especially any Galway player, right? You know, hit me on the head because, uh, you know, what they're doing is is a huge, huge commitment. Uh, we were all. So proud of them the year before last, you know, when they got to the final, and you know, they 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 were a free kick away from being All Ireland champions, and you know, to be a different story now, and you have the same, you have the same group of fellas mostly with a couple of um, you know, younger lads that are coming on the scene, and 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 if. You know, again, and I mentioned at the start, big picture, if you get everybody fully fit, right, and, um, you know, you get a bit of momentum going. I mean, I think the Connacht Championship draw for Galway is, yes. is fav- it's favourable enough. So, like, the series football for Galway won't be starting till May. And we're discussing here a match played in January 
yeah, albeit you know an important league game against Mayo, a Division One game. We want to stay in Division One because we don't want to kind of be dicing with uh, the Talchin Cup or anything like that. But I think I think we need a bit of perspective here. Uh, that that'd be my uh, uh, view on things. Um, and and you know they say that a week is a long time in politics. Well, I say that a week is. Uh, a long time in in Gaelic football as well, so uh, I wouldn't be too hard on you know. There's nobody with, and I suppose you know because he's my old teammate. There's nobody with marooner blood than 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 Porrick Joyce, um, you know, and there'll be nobody hurting as much as him this morning, and he will do everything to try and you know get things right for next Sunday. Just with that. Perspective is important. Uh, on the injury front, um, Liam Silk has broke his uh, metatarsal, so that's what's had him out injured, and he looks like he's going to be out for maybe a long proportion of the league. Jack Lins, I think the aim there is to be back uh, for round three, um, but he's after ankle surgery, so it's hard to know where that'll go. Bork talked yesterday about Sean Kelly. He's unsure whether he'll be back. Killian McDade's going to miss a large proportion of the league. Now, he did say Damien Comer's only a knock, so there probably is a possibility that Damien Comer might be back um, next weekend for that Roscommon game. What might be talked about Limo Canila being one of the positives. Did you see any other positives yesterday? Um, geez, not too many, but well, Charlie McGrath did well, cornerback. I think you were talking about uh, Jack Lynn there, like... He's really cemented himself uh, in cornerback. Tiger still in cornerback himself. And Ryan O'Donnell were going at it uh, yesterday. Um, I told you about it earlier, great to see Kieran Malloy back. I suppose give him a few league games. Hopefully he'll get, get back to full fitness. And I think Sean had a great point there earlier on. Players playing out of position. I think Jenna McHugh is a great example of it. I We've watched him the last few years playing wing back and he'd always bomb up the field and get one or two points and play. And the fact he was playing midfield probably yesterday probably threw him off his game a bit. Like, but um, it was probably she. You've question marks over Shane as well. Like, I suppose he just doesn't seem to be the same player he was two years ago. I think. Um, I don't know. Do you see looking like he's carried a bit of uh, a few pounds? You know, like he. The problem with Shane is now he's going to be marking the best defender every day he goes out. Like. Seven Damien Comer, obviously, but since that All Ireland display, no matter who they're playing now, even if he's a bad game, he's still marking the best first common defender the next day. And I suppose it's a compliment for him, but it can be, uh, it can work in, in, in not in his favour the other side, like, but another side of it, he's living in Dublin now and he's a, a different life, like, like, he's doing a lot of travelling, probably has to come down during the week, back up again, back down again at the weekend. It's it's a lot of mileage and it's probably tough going on him. Like and another side of it, then he's turning thirty one years of age, and I suppose these lads are two years older than what they were last year. He's kind of turned thirty one. Paul Conroy's coming thirty five. Damien Comer turned thirty there a few weeks ago. Liam Silk will be coming thirty next year. Would it be? He might be younger than Damien Comer. So I I think if they are to do something, it's probably. This this is the year that they're going to do so that they're going to do it. Poor it's in his fifth year in in the job. If if they have another disappointing year this year, he he probably question uh, how how further can I can I bring them? Like if they if they don't bounce back, and I suppose the fact that they got to an All Ireland two years ago, I suppose that's the the bear they've set now. This group of players, but I definitely think with a fully fit team, they're definitely the top three or four I, I, in the country. And I think we shouldn't. We should remind ourselves of that. Like bear one or two injuries again, Armagh, and bear one or two that last ten minutes. If you remember last year again, Armagh, they the game won. Like, and we shouldn't forget that they they probably got into an All Ireland semi final or quarter final, and they'd have avoided the Mayo game. So, I suppose they're the they're the they're the just the small margins. But if you get back to what Sean Oaks said there earlier, I just wouldn't get too excited yet because if you go through the play the team from the last day there wasn't too many that featured in the All-Ireland in 2022 20, years ago that were played the last day Bear maybe 
I don't know rightly was there was there six six players that feature seven players, and so I think slowly but truly during the year, if they can get the whole lot of them back for the first round of the championship, you know, all you need is six points to survive in 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 Division One. So if they can get them, but look, next Sunday the reality of it is it's probably a. I won't say it's a relegation game or anything like that, but you lose you lose that game next Sunday, like you really are facing facing down the barrel of of a dogfight to stay in Division One. So hopefully, uh, we can see a massive uh, improvement next Sunday. Yeah, that's key. We're just going to touch on the Ross coming in a minute or two, but a big positive yesterday, Sean O'Guy thought was the performance of Sean Fitzgerald, the way he was able to compete with Aidan O'Shea because Aidan O'Shea physically in the past has had probably the upper hand when going vet mail, but Sean Fitzgerald's performance yesterday is is one of the positives you have to take away. Yeah, I, I thought I thought apart from maybe the first ten minutes, uh, I think Aidan O'Shea got in there for a half chance for yeah. a goal. But I, I, I thought I thought he acquitted himself well, Sean Fitzgerald. And this this was uh, off the back of what I thought was a decent display last um last June. Uh, in in the championship uh, against Mayo, like he's a big big man, and if you were to you know that's your matchup uh, for Aidan O'Shea, um, and you know he wasn't afraid to drive on either, you know when he had possession of the ball, he you know he was bringing the game to to um to Mayo in the second half, uh, when we were against the Breeze. So yeah, I like I you know. Th- you know, in some ways, you know, there's an embarrassment, you know, assuming everybody gets fit, like there is, you know, a lot of options for, for Porrick in the full back line. You have, you know, you have Sean Fitzgerald. And I suppose the tantalizing thing then is, you know, if he does decide to play him full back, where will that release Sean Kelly to? Because we've never really explored that um, thing fully. Uh, he did play in the Division Two League final midfield a couple of years ago but you know that was just a once off um, you know a lot of people would love to see Sean Kelly further out the field um, so and then you know I would ultimately think that Sean Mulcairns will come into contention somewhere in the full back line and then you have your two terriers then Glynn and, and, and McGrath you know so I suppose Sean Fitzgerald it you know, beginning to establish himself opens up options um, elsewhere as well. Um, but you know, yeah, I I was taken with with um, with his display yesterday. Um, he was, you know, he was certainly he was certainly game. Yeah, one of the key performances uh, after that game yesterday was the performance, obviously, uh, Sean Fitzgerald in that uh, eight point defeat for Galway. Attention now turns to. Ross Common and Ross Common will have regrets with the way they lost to Tyrone yesterday. The disallowed goal from King Connolly being up a man after Conkey Patrick gets the red card. Could the more could we see more of the Bridges lads back this weekend? Like Mike, they're going to be up for it this weekend because whoever loses between Goa and Ross Common this 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 weekend. They're already kind of nearly staring down the, the barrel, really, of just surviving. Yeah, a- a- absolutely, Paul. I think, Jesus, I don't know. Like he he said, Shane Welsh was it picked up an injury um le- yesterday, and if he's to be out, and if Damien Comer, let's say, wasn't to 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 be available next Sunday, geez, like you'd have to fancy Ross Common again next Sunday because. I know there's nothing to be. Uh, I was on the dome and I've seen them like, and they they play. I know they were only up against development squad for Galway, but they play lovely football. And you play in the few Bridget's lads on top of that, and I've no doubt the manager will do will try to get them back because it is a do do or die game. It probably is a relegation game because whoever wins is up and running. And I think if Galway could win, they've Derry then next, and like you'd fancy yourself against Derry, uh, Galway would because it. it just Derry and Pierce Stadium, probably you just like to think that they they they'd fancy taking them, but I think Ross Common's a tricky game next Sunday. I I really do. I think he'll get back to it. I think he'll have to go back to the 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 old four, Paul Conroy at midfield. Probably have to throw in Robert Finnerty. He'll throw in Matthew Tierney from the start. I'd say there'll be no 
they've been all corners cut um, next Sunday. I think he's going to go put out the strongest team he possibly can, uh, Porrick will, and and uh, try and get the two points. And it's a difficult place to go, High Park. They've been well up for it. Big Roscommon have a good, a good following. And Roscommon play a nice football. And they'll target Galway too. They'll target Galway. Huge opportunity to get two points. And like if we if we dare to get a defeat the next day, it's really an uphill an uphill struggle from then on. Didn't show no. You don't want to get relegated, but Dublin played in Division Two last year and ended up an All Ireland champion. So we could go. I'm not saying we'll get relegated and we'll want to win All Ireland, but it it can change. You know yourself. Sean O's long enough playing there. You could get a few weeks to go training with the full team. You could play one or two challenge matches. They could go out to London for a week, win out there. They have the easy route of the Connacht final. And all of a sudden, a league game, a few league games in January and February, they're all forgotten about. And and you move on. But uh, Roscommon's a huge game on Sunday. And if I was to, to call it, if, if Shane Welsh and Damien Comer are going to be available, like you'd have to be you'd have to be predicting Roscommon could could could, could win it like they'll be hurting from what happened to Wooden Tyrone. And uh, just with that, it's even it's even more important, Sean O, though, to get a result in Roscommon next Sunday because obviously then a break comes for Galway for a week. So if you can get a victory here going into, say, your break for that week and then you're playing Derry after that break in Trim Stadium, the momentum is suddenly then with the squad. Yeah, no, uh, you're right. But it, it, it is a big challenge. Um, You know, I think Mike, Mike alluded to all the... You know they have they have some they have some lovely players, um, especially up front. I think you know the likes of you know Merton, like Donny Smith got a lovely goal yesterday, and um, Yvendis Smith kind of bombing through the middle, um, you know, and you've you've obviously Ben O'Carroll if he if he if he decides to play, which I, I, you know if I like as Mike said if Davy Burke, um, has any. Uh, charm about him at all. He'll he'll get the the Bridges lads on board for this one. Um, yeah, it's look at. I agree with you. I mean, it would be brilliant to 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 win the game, and then you know you'd be looking forward to the Derry game. Um, it's a big big challenge. Uh, statistically, it, it's it seems to be that Roscommon find it easier to beat us in Galway. Now, this may be more championship than league and, and vice versa, that we yeah. tend to get the better of them in Hyde Park. I mean, the surface up there, um, you know, it's a fantastic. They've, they've relayed the surface and I was actually on it the day of the kind of club final and it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful surface. So, you know, if the weather is anyways decent at all, you know, we should have a, a, a good game of football. But, you know, I think, I think, whatever about whatever personnel Galway have out, you know, they will be more match conditioned. I think if if Porrick had his way again, that you know, instead of putting out the development squads for the matches in the FBD, now I know, you know, he, I, I could, I kind of think I know or knew his thought process that you know these matches are on inside in the dome you know which has no sort of um, correlation to how you know a league match yeah. would go but I think if he had his time again he'd, he'd play a much stronger 15 in, in the two matches in the FBD we could have been a bit more I suppose match ready yesterday but certainly the next day no matter what personnel go out you know I think we will be you know like yesterday would have brought on Sean Mulcairns we would have brought on Kieran Malloy um, you know Owen Kelly as well Owen Kelly missed played the first five league games last year and then we didn't see him at all because he was he was injured so you know that'll bring him on it'll bring um, you know if if he if, if he if he starts uh, Kane Darcy again um you know that'll yesterday's game will have will have brought him on as well, and you know I suppose 
you know, if I was to compare Mayo and Roscommon, and I know, you know, it's a different Sunday and it's, you know, teams play differently, but I, I, I would consider Mayo, uh, I know Roscommon beat them in the championship last year, but I consider Mayo a slightly better team than, than, than Roscommon. So, you know, as long as the attitude is right, which I have no doubt it will be, you know, we have a chance next Sunday, but, you know, we, we, we'd want to kind of, uh, um, you know, get ready for for the trenches. Yeah, it's it's going to be a huge battle this Sunday, as we mentioned. Whoever comes out on top in that, um, it's going to be huge for the league campaign. Mike, obviously, Galway wants an improvement in attitude. They want an improvement in everything. What's the main area you're looking at? And is there anyone who didn't see game time at the weekend? Do you feel that maybe deserves a chance? This Sunday coming up. Um. Well, I suppose uh, whether they deserve it or not, I don't think Paul is going to go down that route. I think he's going to go back to, he's going to put go back to his strongest team, and he's going to put in the the Matthew Tierney's, the Rob Finnerty, Paul Conroy. Whether the um, the O'Curran lad from the Albanics will he will he kill him O'Curran? Will he give him a a bit of game time? He picked a lovely point when he came on. But in saying that, like if if he hasn't good players around him, it's going to be hard, awful hard for a young lad to go in and make step up to that mark and, and kick three or four points. If if the likes of Shane Welch and Damien Comer and around him, um, I still I still I still think he, he if we don't if we don't put out our strongest team and and and, and don't go back to go back to basics, I I don't think we will get a result blowing us coming because. You can you can put whoever you want out on the pitch, but if you don't have the fundamental fundamentals and they weren't there last Sunday, yesterday, you you're on a road to nowhere. And um, I just think I I could I could say that put this lad on and that lad on, but it's not the way Paul can be thinking now because I think he'll just want to get his two points on the board now and he'd want to get up and run. And um, but if there was ever a standout player yesterday, the, the young lad in from Spiddle, Liam O'Connell, he'd he had a fantastic game, and I know that he missed it. He missed a few, like, but fair play to him for having a go. And I seen him in the first ten or fifteen minutes. I think he was after kicking his first or second score, and he was just gene up the lads. Like he was, it was like he was there for a few years, you know, trying to get the lads going. So it, it was great to see. And maybe you put Matthew Tierney in from the start. You put Rob Finnerty in from the start, and Shane plays. You have your three year players to start the All Ireland two years ago, starting from the start. And if Liam O'Connell could chip in them with two or three points, suddenly, you know, as Sean Oak said, it might be all doom and gloom. Sean Oak, with that, like as Mike said, we expect a lot of the front runners, well, the front runners who are available, you'd expect to see them in from the start. But do you get this sense, like going on yesterday, do you get the sense that they're trying to time their run? Is that what you feel? Go away, trying to do this year compared to learn yes. from last year. I, 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 I would most definitely, um, think that's the case. I think, I, obviously, you know, nobody's privy to what what goes on, but, uh, I would suggest that, you know, okay, they sat down, planned out their year. Obviously, losing yesterday wasn't part of the plan, but if you look last year, um. You know, and I know it was said like the teams that w- that did that did well in the league didn't, you know, do so well in the championship. And it, you see, I, th- that's understandable because it's a, you know, it's a new championship structure and you have to time your run. So, um, uh, you know, I would think that they planned long term, and you would say, you know, the 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 three things that they would want from the league would be number one to stay in Division One. Right. So, you know, that's still within our grasp. Number two, then that you you widen your panel for the championship. Right. Mm. So you look at yesterday, you had, um, you know, O'Curry got more game time. O'Connell got his start. Uh, Kane Darcy uh, played um, off the top of my head now. You know, so so that's the second thing. And then the third thing then as well is that, you know, Whenever the league finishes for us, or wherever we end up in the league, that we're fresh for the 
for the championship, that we're not, you know, that we're not flat footed or whatever. And that, um, you know, so, so I, I, I would think that that is the, the, you know, the, the game plan for the league as such, right. With the championship in mind, um, you know, so, um, to answer your question, yes, I think that long-term planning is a factor. Um, you know, even though we all are, you know, looking at what happened very much in the short term yesterday mm-hmm. and are obviously disappointed with the result. Like, but um, I know I'm repeating myself, but I think you know, I think that is um, certainly something that has been factored in. Yeah. I just think I think to sum up yesterday, uh, like Sean Old touched on it there, try to extend the panel, and I think. The one thing we can see from yesterday, I don't think that was achieved yesterday, whether he'll achieve it in the next six weeks to try and unearth these six or seven players to to make an influence, like to make a difference come come in, 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 in out in May and June when 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 the Heat Championship uh, goes on. Yes, Liam O'Connell did well, but we hadn't got more of them. We hadn't got five or six of them that stood up. Sean Fitzgerald did well. So uh, I think... You know, it's going to it'll the proof be in the pudding the next few weeks to see how the next few games go. Absolutely, and Ross Commons now the focus as we mentioned this Sunday. But that's all we do have time for on today's show. A big thank you to Mike and Sean Oak for coming on. Thanks, Paul.